I, uh, I'm way behind. So it, it, that has been, uh, during the filming, I thought about it a lot. My gen, generally, I'm an optimist. I know at every major turning point in history, the creation of the train, for example, there were many, many people who thought this was the end of civilization, that this would be the road to doom for mankind. Um, I'm sure when the television came about, similar things, the internet, there's, you know, I am a firm believer that the pull for human beings is towards the good, generally outweighing the bad. So that I don't know why or why that is. Um, it's just my mainly, may, maybe naive, optimistic view that whatever knowledge we gain, and if it comes to pass, that we can somehow understand what consciousness is, um, if we can somehow create that, that it will ultimately be used for for good um, and I'm sure along the way there will be bad and it will be exploited but that's my genuine view so unlike my character I like to think optimistically about these sort of discoveries and advancements thank you uh, this is for Neil uh, regarding uh, consciousness as you were just mentioning Owen you great uh the river great thank you yeah i know you just closed this weekend thank you great uh in regards to consciousness uh was there any kind of opposition because i never seen your show but was there any sort of opposition in regards to a uh, theme or a tone of uh, religious overviews of uh, how the thing the would go? Uh, i never seen the short but was there ever any sort of opposition in regards to uh religion or anything of that nature because you know you're borderline in regards to the consciousness, and uh, I recall on a Facebook or something, rather you got a couple of things sent back to you in regards to religious issues. Was there any sort of opposition from groups or people or anything of that nature in regards? To no, that? no, no, no. Or we did didn't. you ever think about introducing that into the? Thing? Well, I mean, the original the original concept for for Hugh's character um, was always to be in opposition with artificial intelligence, right? For it, for it to be that you have AI and then you have um, you have a point of view that if someone is creating artificial intelligence, they're basically walking into into God's territory. You know that you're doing something that should only be left to God. Therefore, you shouldn't do it. So that opposition was always in the script. Um, in terms of in terms of getting you know feedback from it, I don't. I'm not sure. I know what you mean with with Facebook, but. It, it really was just decisions in the edit, like how much do you want to weigh one way or the other, you know? I don't know if that answers the question or not. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Ricardo Hazel. I'm with the Shadow League, and this is actually for anyone who wishes to answer it. Uh, thematically, uh, the film draws upon uh, consciousness and what it is to be alive, and that's something that human beings have been questioning since Pinocchio. <laughs> and all the way up through real steel and, and AI. Uh, why do you feel these things thematically keep resonating with humanity as we advance? Okay, I'll take a shot at that one. Um, <laughs> well, I, I, my, my point of view actually on artificial intelligence, which ties into the, the, the nature for humans constantly looking into the reasons for, for why we exist and why consciousness exists changed during the making of Chappie. And I'm not actually completely sure that humans are going to be capable of giving birth to AI in the way that films fictionalize it. So you have weak artificial intelligence, which is like you know a robot or, or, or a computer system that follows a list of protocols, and it's like yes, no answers that can be as complex as you want. And then you have strong AI, which is basically like a human, like something that can think up a thought that's never been thought up, or paint a painting, or you know, write a poem. So in the realm of strong AI, or in the realm of human consciousness, I think that it's been something that tr troubles humans or forces us to look at it over and over for millennia, or as long as we've really been conscious, because there is no answer. There is no explanation for us to, um, you know, even for 1% to, to grip onto and to hold onto. So we just don't know why we're here. We don't know how consciousness is created. And we don't know the nature of consciousness, whether it becomes a spiritual and philosophical discussion or whether it's simply running, you know, electrical currents through synapses and it leads to, it leads to consciousness. 
I think it isn't that, by the way. So it's probably the most core fundamental question that humans can ask, and I think that's the reason that we constantly keep asking it. Hi. Hi, I'd like to ask Dr. Charlto about his performance. And uh, I mean, you had a lot of pressures you had to deliver emotionally and also had to get your movements quite right. So what was it like doing that and being on the set with everyone? Um, it was a fun experience, really, to get to play a, a kid most of the time. And um, uh, we used a process that's really, I think, going to become more and more prevalent in Hollywood, like a performance capture process where I wore a gray suit and was able to engage with everybody on the set just as you normally would, you know, just act the robot and then an incredibly skilled team of animators. And I've actually got the shirt made that has their, their names just as a way of trying to, because I, I come from visual effects and I think these guys are the, the real unsung heroes of our business. Um, it actually has a back too, <laughs> would you believe? There's like over 200 people that, that uh, were involved in you know, putting Chappie on top of me and having to try and, uh, with the very limited face that Chappie has, uh, convey the emotion that obviously I, I got to use my whole face. The animators only got certain tools, ears, and little things they could do with the with the eyes. And um, but it was a it was an amazing, it was almost magical experience. You you feel like together, you know, me and these two hundred people kind of gave birth to some totally new creative being. In, in a small way, it was like creating AI in, in, as an actor. You know, you sort of made some, some new being. Hi. Um, obviously, when you're going into this, you have, Neil, you have this idea of what you want the film to look like. But obviously, you know, Charlotte talked about all the animators. You're putting your faith in them. What was your first vision, and did it come out exactly the way you wanted, or was it better than you expected it to turn out? Um, this, this film is probably the closest to the original idea um, all the way through the execution of it. So I think uh, if you, basically I designed, I designed the, this kind of robot that the, the Chappie was loosely based on in about 2003, and then when we started working on this in like, I guess, 20, 13 or 2014, we um, modified that robot. So I knew, I had a pretty good idea of what he was gonna look like. So in terms of photography and design and um, um, the, the look of the movie in general, it was closer to what I had in my head than the other two films. And it was also, in terms of the, the computer graphics, I think worked out better than I expected. I mean, there's always shots that you feel like are computer graphics and they're never fully there. But the ratio of shots that appear to have been photographed um, is very high in this film. I feel like the, the VFX really, really worked out. Like the circumstances were just correct. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Does a film like this make you think about, hey, I'd love to have one of these robots someday? And if so, what would you want them to do? What would be some of the tasks? I would just like mine not to kill me, you know, <laughs> as if, it, if, it, if it realized that it was a superior being, I would be a little nervous. <laughs> I don't think it's a case of like, you could tell it to do the dishes, you know, it's a different kind of robot. I'm sure you could program a robot to do all kinds of useful things, although I think they're trying to create like a butler robot for people, which would be useful. Um, cheerful robot for company. I actually think that um, the devs robots, his little friends, when he gets home are so lovely. Yeah, yeah. Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, mess, mess. That's the kind of robot I would want. That's, that's my level. Not very destructive and maybe not that capable. <laughs> I, I, I have a nickname at home uh, of El Vago. I'm very vague. I forget a lot of stuff. I would love a non-judgmental reminder all the time. No sense of, oh, are you kidding? It's in the... Just, it doesn't even need to be a robot then. No. It could just be like a little personal just exactly. device. Exactly. Remember you came back upstairs to get that phone. <laughs> Why are you walking back down with that button? <laughs> Urban Report. Hip hop culture is heavily ingrained in this film. Why is it so important to has fan the continents? 
What, did you say why is it so important to span the continents? Yeah, um, well, there's, I guess there's two reasons for that. Um, the first, pri by far the primary reason, is the band, the Unfoot, the, the I don't know, band is the right word, I also don't know if rap group is the right word, but <laughs> them. They were uh, extremely important to me to be in the film, pretty much from the time I came up with it, right? So as soon as you put them in the film, you automatically, you're just including a whole, um, they themselves are naturally a, a, a mixture of several different forms of hip hop and like South African, um, you know, rap culture and influenced by U.S. rap culture and everything. So, just putting them in is probably <coughs> seventy-five percent or eighty percent of, of of what the audience will perceive as that. The other smaller amount was that um, I didn't actually necessarily want to shoot the movie in South Africa again because of District Nine. I wanted to to put it in North America, and I actually we actually did a draft of the script that was in North America just to test it. But the unfold was so. Um, essential to the film that by putting them in North America it felt like a fish out of water it felt like it felt like the wrong move to do and so by keeping it in South Africa it allowed them to just be in their sort of like native environment and it felt legit but I still wanted to Americanize the film as much as I could on purpose I wanted to go away from District 9 and just not delve into the the very South African themes that you can get into easily in South Africa because it's really you know um, rife with them. So that was choices like putting um, Jose in, right, in their gang, who was an American and is not South African, and little choices like that to just add up. There's hundreds of times in the movie where normally when we would do ADR for random soldiers or random helicopter pilots or whatever, I actively <coughs> made them be American voices, and I knew that Americans wouldn't notice, and I knew that the entire South African audience would notice. And then I also knew that the entire South African audience noticing is like Philadelphia on a Thursday night, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there are little hints nice. of Americanism. No, 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 I love this. Um, yeah, hi, my name's Jackie. I am a South African that did notice from Johannesburg. Um, I had two questions. <laughs> Um, two questions for Hugh and uh, Sigourney. Uh, Hugh, just uh, using the Australian accent, I mean, I heard people last night kind of uh, react very strongly to that. Um, how much fun was that? And, you know, th was a lot of the slang yours and improvised? And, and for Sigourney, uh, what was this like compared to uh, some of the other sci-fi movies you've worked on? What was it like working on this set? What was different, if, if anything? I, I, I had so much fun playing this. Uh, it was. Neil's idea actually uh, originally uh, when we first talked uh, about it and I did uh, it's sort of embarrassing to say you think that those sayings should be off the top of my head but I kind of looked up I uh, googled Australian slang and a lot of the ones uh, that are in there actually came from Neil like Neil googled it as well I yeah, think I right? Yeah I googled it originally yeah. like, <laughs> The frog, frog in the sock. sock. Frog in the sock is an 11 out of 10. Yes, yeah, 11. We just laugh so much that I'd never heard that saying before, actually, in my life. Smart as a dunny rat. That's right. <laughs> but we just had so much fun with the character. I remember at one point saying to Neil, I said, Oh, we're having too much fun here with this. But it was, uh, you know, it was so much fun creating that character, um, you know, obviously playing the villain in the piece. But, uh, it, w it was it was just great great fun um, and I haven't worn those khaki shorts since high school so that was kind of a throwback. And nice haircut too. Yeah. Thank you. I wasn't going to mention the mullet but I'm very proud of the mullet. Watch out Halloween this year. Mullet's back. 